So here we've got the Snallygaster. Now the Snallygaster is like a giant angry penis that grew legs. And like most giant sentient genitalia, it's out to creepy uncle molest just about everything it can get its long, bald skin fingers on. The Snallygaster isn't friendly by any means. Scientists believe that its natural environment is skulking in the dark all alone like some kind of freaky long-toed weirdo. Now if there's one creature that haunts me right down to my ball skin, it's this creepy no-eyed squishy butt skin chameleon. In American folklore, the Snallygaster is a bird reptile chimera originating in the superstitions of early German immigrants later combined with sensationalist newspaper reporters of the monster. Clearly, Bethesda's version of the Snallygaster really devolved from a bird monster. Someone clearly barged into a concept conference room one day like a bigwig and said, Birds? Ha! Birds aren't scary, no, no. You know what people are afraid of? Giant wrinkly penises with teeth. You ever been chased by a ball skin with teeth? Yeah, me neither. But I'd imagine it would smell all crusty and wet and make weird noises as it smushed its way in moist pursuit. Which would be upsetting. Maybe not super scary, but definitely upsetting. Like cry in the shower upsetting for sure, or a two paragraph entry in my dire upsetting, no question. Early sightings associate the Snallygaster with Frederick County, Maryland, especially the areas of South Mountain and the Middleton Valley. Now, I'm no expert of skanky weird forest freaks, but I'd imagine they're skulking about in a sewer drain somewhere or stalking a seven-year-old from their closet, not prancing around on the Serengeti or skipping through valleys with half-goat people playing flutes and shit. That seems too Disney princess for something that looks like a nightmare with creepy adult-sized baby legs. But again, I'm no expert. Turns out these gigachotas are just living their best lives on the prairie like they aren't one of God's mistakes. Just playing it off like they got nowhere to be and shit. Later reports would expand on sightings, encompassing an area to include Central Maryland and the Washington, D.C. metro area. So this thing gets around, just hopping from shantytown to shantytown, rubbing its balls on street lamps and swing sets, like a sexual harassment seminar that mutated and came to life all over the place. Like a squishy bag of dicks that smushed its way mile by mile. Now the area of Frederick County was settled by German immigrants beginning in the 1730s. Early accounts describe the community being terrorized by a monster called a Schnellergeist, meaning quick ghost in German. See, if that was me, I wouldn't be afraid of something called a quick ghost. No, a ghost that just lingers around all slow and shit would be way more scary. Just dragging its cloud-like ass up and down your hallways like it's got nowhere to be and shit. Yeah, that would be terrifying. A lazy ghost is way more scary than a ghost that's all quick with places to be. Like that quick ghost will give you a quick boo and tickle and then fuck right off. But that slow ghost will just linger. Yeah, it'll linger around for like 5 to 10 years, crashing on your couch, not paying rent, eating your cheesy Dorito dip right out of the jar with a spoon like a fucking nightmare. Anyways... The earliest incarnations of the creature mix the half-bird features of a siren with the nightmare's features of demons and ghouls. The Snallygaster was described as half-reptile, half-bird, having a metallic beak lined with razor-sharp teeth, occasionally alongside octopus-like tentacles. So basically, they had no fucking clue what this thing looked like. They just kept adding and taking away shit, like it was a children's game with no rules and everyone gets a prize. One second it's got a beak, the next it's got reptile legs. Before you know it, it'll be wearing skinny jeans and have a t-shirt that's two sizes too small and tries to emphasize its muscleless, childlike body. It's hard to believe it went from a bird with tentacles, then Bethesda gets a hold of it, and it's a ball sack with eyes. I mean pick a lane for fuck's sake. Hard to be scared of a cryptid 
If every time you hear a story about it, the thing reinvents itself like it's Daniel Day-Lewis. The Snallygaster was rumored to swoop silently from the sky to pick up and carry off its victims. Now, I can't speak for everyone else, but if I got carried off into the night sky by a monster with an identity crisis, talking to me about nobody gets them and tries to tell me some of their slam poetry before they kill me, well, that would be a fate worse than death. That would be scary on a number of levels. Also, it's hard to believe that this creature could swoop in silently like a ninja and just snatch people right up. It's described as being all gnarly as fuck. It's hard to believe it would fly all majestic like a falcon. It would likely be flapping around like a fucking idiot, like a brain-damaged duck trapped in a kiddie pool. Just flailing about, making child squeals and shit. I feel like I might see that thing coming from a mile away. However, snatching people up from the sky, I feel, is the best way to get yourself a victim, though. Just fucking snatching them from the sky. Nobody would see that coming. How often are you walking with somebody and they're like, oh shit, we should keep our eye out for sky predators. Yeah, that never happens. Nobody expects to be attacked from above. To be honest, if I saw someone get snatched up from a sky lizard or whatever the fuck this thing is, I'd be all like, well, I didn't see that coming at all. Even the guy being carried off would have to take a step back and say, well played, well played, you creepy, fucked up looking thing, you. Now we expect stuff to attack us from the ground, snakes, spiders, tremors, etc. We even expect stuff to attack us from the water, like sharks, whales, angry mermaids, but nobody expects to be attacked from the sky. Well played, Snallygaster, well played. The earliest stories claim that this monster sucked the blood of its victims. So to be clear, this cryptid in most folklore looked like an angry, bird-like, vampire, ugly reptile creature. Wow, very specific. It has been suggested that the legend was resurrected in the 19th century to fight and freed slaves because nothing gets a person to run back into shackles of injustice faster than the thought of being snatched dry by a giant dusty nutsack with a beak or tentacles or whatever the fuck this thing's supposed to have. Even Theodore Roosevelt proposed to hunt the Snallygaster because nothing says... I got my wits about me than gathering a bunch of people together to hunt a fictional creature. Now, when they couldn't find the Snallygaster, Roosevelt and all his constituents tried to kill Aslan and the Easter Bunny just for fun. Come on, guys. It looks like the Tooth Fairy is getting the drop on us. I'm sure I just seen its glittery ass run under that overpass over there. I can see it already. Newspaper accounts throughout February and March 1909 describe encounters between local residents and a beast with enormous wings, a long pointed bill, claws like steel hooks, and an eye in the center of its forehead. Now this fucking thing has an eye in the center of its forehead? What the fuck? Can we all just agree that nobody knows what the fuck this thing looks like? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No wait. It's several things I can't properly identify coming together all at once. It was described as making screeches like a locomotive whistle, which is weird because those are the same screeches I make when I'm taking a shit. Just like a locomotive. A great deal of publicity surrounded this string of appearances, with the Smithsonian Institute offering a reward for the hide, it was later revealed that these reports were part of a hoax perpetuated by Middleton Valley Register editor George C. Roderick and reporter Ralph S. Wolf in an attempt to increase readership. Well done. The descriptions they invented borrowed themes from existing German folklore, including dragon-like creatures who snatched children and livestock and also appeared to invoke descriptions of the Jersey Devil, which had been spotted mere weeks earlier. Now, as it appears in Fallout 76, the Snallygaster is a little bit different. Experiments with recombined strains of the FEV at the West Tech Research Center in Appalachia produced numerous failed mutations with two exceptions. 
The first of these was the FEV's 006443 from October 14th, 2077. A phase two combination strand that combined traits that resembled a number of different species. The results were considered disturbing by the scientist but provided valuable insights as to the capability of the FEV. Basically, if there's anything fucked up looking in the Fallout universe, you can blame that shit on the forced evolutionary virus or the FEV. This case is no different. Just like how Deathclaws was a lizard that just got pumped solid with hormones, the Snallygaster is a wrinkly ball bag that got pumped up or whatever. Not exactly sure what this thing was mutated from, to be honest, but it definitely looks gnarly as fuck now, doesn't it? Changes include a number of ocular organs along with the enlarged upper torso, a second set of arms ending in claw digits, and a large sickle-shaped claw on each inner toe, kind of like the Velociraptor in Jurassic Park. The living, stable, and functioning subject was sustaining itself normally, a major accomplishment for the program, and was planned for release in Huntersville after the subsequent experiment matured. The mutant was not returned to the area until January 3rd, 2078, when it escaped containment and the faculty. So like any dangerous experiment, it broke free and became dangerous as fuck in the wild. The mutant procreated, leading to the emergence of Snallygaster mutants across Appalachia. At first I was wondering how this thing managed to procreate in the wild, but then I remembered that it's basically a giant sack of gross angry testicles. So it probably just rubbed its gross ball bag on everything in the forest until something got prego with its fucked up looking offspring. Now the Snallygaster is a quadrupedal creature. It has two arms with three claws of which one is an opposable thumb and two small limbs on its back of its body, which is usually used to support itself while sitting. Because nothing says I'm a disgusting freak like a bunch of back thumbs. It has no proper face but has a mouth with a long tentacle-like tongue covered in acid and has multiple eyes along its back. Now the Snallygaster will use its tongue like a whip up close and spit balls of acid at range. The Snallygaster has at least 40 eyes, two rows of teeth, and thorns on its back. It has been described as being a dragon-like demon that hunts an area outside of neighboring DC. They are easily recognizable from a distance due to their signature clicking sounds and the thick, pugnant odor they emit. They're also fuck ugly, so there's that. Snallygasters are almost exclusively found around highly toxic or irradiated areas in groups of up to four. When provoked, they will spit balls of toxic slime from their mouth, dealing poison damage. They will then run to the player character and use a melee attack, either scratching or hitting the player character with their tongue. When idle and having not spotted the player character yet, they can be heard making various grunting and snorting noises, as you would expect from something that looks just like this. Now, Snallygasters are immune to radiation damage and take 150% damage when struck in the head, as most things do. The Snallygaster is by far one of the ugliest fucking things I've ever seen in my life, and it's sure to haunt my dreams right up until the point where I finally say fuck it and blow my brains out. I think it's safe to say that Bethesda did their own thing when it came to the Snallygaster, creating a creature unique in and of itself. It doesn't quite match up to the folklore that was the Snallygaster, but it sure does do its own thing in Appalachia, and it's sure to make anyone's playthrough of Fallout 76 that much more interesting at the very least. In summary, the Snallygaster is ugly, dangerous, and probably fictional as fuck. But it makes for a good story, and it makes for an amazing villain in Fallout 76. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. <coughs> bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon, too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? 
I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, fuck. Just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck! Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average Spader's fairy might come and tickle your butthole. I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.